times for our show so we can reach different audiences. Tonight we have a wonderful guest that Rose will introduce. I'm just happy to be here always on TMS Roundtable. Hi, Rose. Good. Hi, Tova. Hi, Christian. You know, guest tonight, we've got Christian de Villa. Now, Christian contacted us to tell us about his recovery. It's not so much of a Sarno story, but an inner strength that he mustered or found, and he's willing to share that with the rest of us and let us all see how he went another, another how to put it, another way, but he got to his feelings. And in getting to his feelings, he realised that his somatic pain was about his repressed feelings, the feelings he didn't want to know about. Christian, would you give us a little bit of a background first? Oh, by the way, folks, he's an Aussie. <laughs> I am. That's we right. don't get many Aussies on this, so <laughs> welcome, fellow Aussie. Thank you, thank you. Tell uh, us a bit well, about yourself personally and a bit about your journey, please, so that we can get a grip of, you know, the struggle that you went through. Because I can't remember how long you had that somatic pain, but it was quite a while. And uh, probably at, at least five years I had varying yeah. symptoms and the severity of them, they got the worst for about three years continuous. So for about two of the years, it was on and off. And then when it hit the third, fourth and fifth year, it was continuous, nonstop, 24 hours of, of um, symptoms going on. But uh, my name is Christian. I'm a, I'm a high school teacher. I'm 41 years old, uh, turning 42 in a, in a few months. I, I think it's important to say I'm a middle child. I'm not the eldest. I'm the middle child, which, as you've probably come to see, matters a lot. You know, it determined a lot about my personality, being a people pleaser, not being assertive. Um, a lot of inattention, I guess, caused by, by that. And uh, I didn't hurt myself or anything. I just one day just started getting back pain out of nowhere. Just I was sitting down and just I just started feeling it. And then it, it just escalated from there to the legs all the way down. I got tinnitus. I got a special rare kind of tinnitus, actually, which is um, pulsatile tinnitus, which means you can hear your heartbeat 24 hours a day. It is unbelievable. It's, it's really, really difficult thing to, to go through. So even if you block it out, you just, you hear the rhythm of your heart nonstop. So even if you try to sleep, you just hear this, the dum, the dum. It's, it, um, I, my heart goes out to anyone that has that. It's a, it's a really, really uh, big issue. Could I sort of interrupt and ask what exactly was going on in your life? just in general, when that first symptom happened? Because usually it's related. You said you didn't have an injury, but I no. guess that there's a heart injury somewhere there. And if it's yes. all right with you to share a little bit so that our audience will get the gist that you don't actually have, you know, people will say lift a heavy weight and think that it's the back pain or pull something. But in actual right. fact, you can get pain from your heartache. So I don't know what it was. Yeah, yeah um, so for, for me, uh, the basically, I got married. I got, I got married. My wife moved from overseas. We bought a house. She started living with me. Within, two or three, within a year, we had a child. So all these things happened within one year. Then yeah. basically, the onset of the symptoms come when my son hits almost primary school age because my son god bless him was an absolute handful he was not like me at all i'm very compliant i'm very i'm about i'm a people pleaser i just couldn't understand why he didn't want to please the teachers and i'm getting a lot of negative feedback christian he's too aggressive christian he won't listen instead of taking those um that advice and doing things with it i took it on as guilt as uh as personal oh, oh on my ego about yeah. who I am and my, there were failures on my behalf as a parent and so then when he then he moved slowly into primary school and then he had more issues they thought he may have had ADHD but he was just being silly for a term but there was a lot of negative feedback from the school and it's really the way I interpreted that and then on top of that the three years of um, very severe symptoms coincides with the 
it's no coincidence, by the way, people as well. My father, uh, the, the man I idolized my whole life, I never had any heroes in my life, except my father was my hero. I didn't need any sports figures, nothing like that. My father was everything to me. And when he basically, he got uh, stage, uh, stage four um, terminal cancer, and he developed psychotic depression around that time. So he went straight into a mental institution. He, this is a man who was, you know, a very brilliant chemical engineer, someone who was very mentally strong. And he just went from here and deteriorated entirely. And the whole family was in an uproar. My severe symptoms started roughly a month to two months after those uh, daily hospital visits and seeing him. And a lot of, I started talking, talking negatively to myself and, that really compounded a lot of things. I was very lost at that time. So I had these things going on, plus the physicality. Because, because of who I am and my personality, training, exercise, boxing is a big deal to me. I'm a small guy. I'm only five foot five, about 72 kilograms. But I'm very strong. I can box. I do all these things. But I needed these things to sort of prop up my ego because I felt inferior about myself. I had a, I had a very deep-seated, I wouldn't say hate or anything, but I felt that there was something in something just amiss. I needed to fix myself or have a, an elite level of fitness to be different than other people because I always felt being shorter that maybe I was different for some reason. And I'm actually okay with all of that right now. I'm fine. I've worked that all out. <laughs> yeah. So the, all those things happened uh, together. Yeah. And, and I've got a work promotion. I went from being responsible myself as a teacher, responsible for my students, being responsible for 150 people. So it's no coincidence that all of those things together mean stress, means that the body, our bodies are the, are, are the vehicle for all of these things. You know, our, our bodies hold on to these uh, emotions. They display symptoms. It's, yeah, uh, as Dr. Sano says, it's TMS, the mind-body syndrome. It's mind and body together communicating as one. They're not separate. Yeah. They're actually linked. Yeah. 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 Um, when did you realize that all this was related to your chronic pain? What What was the guiding light? I, I, I ordered the... I just happened to be on Amazon one day. I wasn't doing anything. I was just Googling something. And, and one, one of the recommended searches, because I was, I was very obsessed. That's another thing with my personality. Very... Um, I'm a perfectionist. I'm, I'm also very conscientious. So when the doctors, the physios, the chiros, when they recommended any type of treatment, well, I took that treatment and I... I you added I, to I, it, I, did I, you? Oh, well, I, I, I treated it like my boxing. Well, in order to get better, you just do five times as much as anybody else. So I'll do five times as much stretching. I'll do five times as much foam rolling. I'll, I'll, I'll do everything they want and more, and I'll be so strong it, it won't take long. But... I just was perennially in this recovery phase. I never got any better. I, I was waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning, foam rolling for an hour just to do my day because someone, that one physio told me, you need, you're stressed out, you need to relax. So I would wake up at 4 a.m., I'd foam roll, do my day. I'd come, I'd foam roll throughout the day. Then I'd come home, I'd massage myself. I'd have, go to Pilates, an obsession with trying to get better. You're only, when you're trying to fix yourself so desperately like that, you're actually sub-communicating to, to your unconscious brain there's something completely wrong with this. We're in danger. We're in fear. The, your nervous system is switched on, and all these symptoms are, con are going on at the same time. You know, and that's definitely evidenced by uh, not only did I have symptoms throughout the whole day. So I would have, um, I, I would probably be on a six to out of ten when I woke up just from sleeping. You know, we're not supposed to be in pain every single day. I, we're not designed like that. We're designed very, very strong. That's something I'm really really um adamant about i think the potential of the human body to heal is incredible and completely understated by a lot of our our doctors our bodies are incredible i've been through so much i mean not just mentally but physically i've needles this big put in me i've had people massage me unbelievably degrees of pressure pain all of that um i've laid down for hours on end doing nothing I'm back, I train five days a week, my body just bounced back just like that. Our bodies are incredible and we need to need to um, embrace that. You know, I, I embrace the opposite. I embrace the fragility wow. of my body. I'm gonna interrupt you. because So what happened, so basically you're in all this pain, 
you're at the point not realizing it's connected to these emotional things. You're going to doctors and getting the conventional and not getting relief. Like, give us a little bit of a timeline. Okay, so I'll, I'll just go back to the Dr. Sana. I found his book online. I read it uh, as an audio book. I listened to it once, and he he was just describing me. He, it, it's it's no coincidence. He described me. I went onto a, a sort of a forum about TMS. Everyone's talking about me. Everyone's writing down my exact thought, daily thoughts. And I thought this is no coincidence. These people are me. I am them. These symptoms, which people, the medical profession couldn't work out. That's everything Dr. Sano says. The only reason why it made sense is because everything I was told elsewhere didn't make sense. My symptoms come, came and went. You know, sometimes they'd be a three. Then if I felt angry, well, they were straight up to an eight. Or if I, if I perceived danger, like something was, if I felt myself in a bad sort of situation that I wasn't happy talking to someone with, I felt uncomfortable. All of a sudden, my, my symptoms would escalate. If I'm at home, my symptoms de-escalate, go down to three or four because I'm I'm comfortable. I told that to the physios. They didn't believe me. They said that that can't be. And when I read it in Dr. Sano, that's when I started realizing pain, emotion, and then actually connecting that pain is created in the brain, not in the body. And that that's what that's Dr. Sano's ultimate message, isn't it? Christian, when you first start reading Sano, did you sort of believe that he was wrong until you got into it? How could it be? Because this self-reflection is a difficult thing to do for many people. And often they'll open the book and, you know, one person said he threw it across the room when it was no. given to him. No, he just Alan Gordon. Alan Gordon. Yeah. His mother gave him the book and he threw it across the room. David, I think it was David Goldberg, actually. But Michael yeah. Goldberg was another Michael, guy, but yeah. Alan Gordon, especially Michael Goldberg, was, was scheduled for surgery and he threw it across the room and then picked it up one day. And I mean, that's another story, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just wondering when you picked it up and that idea, but your dad was a scientist, was he? Yes, he's a chemical engineer. That's right. Yeah, I wonder if that influenced you. I wonder no, if you... Really? No, for me, Dr. Sano described me to a T. If you put up a checklist of everything I am, he was like 98% me. And it, it just was, it was too, it was too accurate. I, I actually would stop the, the audio book probably every five minutes and I would walk around my bedroom and I'd just say, to my, because this was at the time, by the way, every time I had bad symptoms. So in that three year, very bad period, I tried to re-exercise. So for me, the pain really came about directly after exercise. So I would exercise and then I would have severe symptoms that would last for six, seven weeks. And I would just basically be bedridden. I would only go to work. And then when I came back from work, I would lie down straight, do absolutely nothing. I'd tell anybody I won't pick up my son. I won't kick a soccer Remember ball. Remember what you said, you would do things and be okay. You would go and you do things and manage and then you'd come home and you like break down like there's something interesting even about your behavior with the pain and how it got better or worse or you ignored it or didn't or distract you remember you so you're talking about that now which is an interesting pattern yes yeah uh, definitely uh uh sorry i uh, just it just made dr sana made a lot of sense uh oh yeah well, we know and that. It also made a lot of sense, Rose, because I have tried everything. You know, uh, the people, if they're listening to this, um, I know it's not a competition or anything, but I guarantee you I've stretched more than you. I've been to physios more than you. I've spent more than you. And I'm not bragging that in a good way. I'm just saying I've tried everything. I yeah. tried heat packs. I went to bed lathering myself every night in um, anti-pain creams or some type of, some type of um, heat creams. So uh, when did things begin to shift? When did you see a shift? So here you are going to all these physicians, getting information that could help someone else but didn't help you. What, what was the journey? What happened next? I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, I was not somebody who ever had um, any sort of medical issues. Uh, I was always super healthy throughout my, in my entire life. My biggest struggle in life has been the TMS struggle. Prior to that, I didn't really have anything. And so I went from a man who ran 70Ks a week. 
I ran that for probably for a decade. I was looked like a, a trained like a boxer. I had this, I guess, perfect body, if you, if you will. And I went from that to being someone who's bedridden. And then when I'm in bed watching these videos, I'm just thinking, how did you get here? What are you doing? Well, what's happening here? You know, I'm, I'm spending all this money. My entire life is revolving around recovery. I go to Pilates. I go to massages. I do these things every time. You haven't gotten better yet. W what's going on? And then when the pain was so, you know, severe and chronic, there's more talk from, you know, physicians. And I'm not going to uh, badmouth uh, anybody, but there was a lot of talk about taking cortisone shots, potential, potentially looking at a surgeon. That's what really scared me. When I started re researching that, the, the rates of success are like so minimal, like people who get back surgeries. Remember, uh, just by the way, when they actually scanned my, my spine, I'm 41, I had one herniated disc, one. That's nothing. Most people have massively, you know, uh, for example, uh, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. My boss at school is an, an elderly uh, woman. She's lovely. She has every single uh, vertebrae in her spine is technically herniated. She exercises every day. She sits down for 12, 14 hours a day. I would walk past her every day, limping, touching my back, and I would watch her. And I just thought to myself, what's the she, matter with her? She's fine. You're not. What's wrong with you, Christian? Let's do this. Yeah. And then yeah. I just started the journey from there. It just, it, it, enough, enough's enough. You know, I have to help. Yeah. I have to be productive. The thing is that you, you were blessed with that insight. And that's one of the things that I want to point out to our audience, that that insight was sort of like the turnaround factor. And it's a, for some people, it's very difficult. And because Christian actually did it, it doesn't mean that you can't do it, but it might take longer. That's all. It might take longer to convince yourself. He, he was fortunate as he looked at, it, at the school principal and saw that she had all these disc problems, but had no pain. And he had that insight, why is it happening to me? But you see, a lot of people can't do that because they've got a feeling that their, their symptoms are unique or they're special. But fortunately, yes. Christian, and that's so, why it's so lovely that you've come forward to tell us about this because you've got a lot of clarity. And if, if anyone else is listening and they don't have that clarity, just listen to Christian's story because it will come. It might not come today or tomorrow. It might take six months, but it will happen. So thank you for, for sharing that. Uh, anyway, you're telling us. I interrupted you. But I'm going to interrupt again because what right. I'm hearing, this is also for a lot of listeners, what I'm hearing is, first of all, you're being critical. Oh, I'm not like my boss. What's wrong with me? Why aren't I getting better? So there's that fight and flight, bang, bang, kick in the back, kick in the back, kick in the head. But then something shifted because that's the fight and flight mechanism protecting you because you're being critical and judging. But somehow you did somehow accept he something. He let go. Yeah. You, you, you know what? I, I'm, I went through hell and back. I really have. I, I've been through so, uh, so much the last five years. I'm still here. <laughs> I'll be here tomorrow and I'll be training. I'll be with my friends in the gym uh, shortly because I want to be, I, I choose to be, um, you know, I've, things got, things got really hard, but when, when you, I, what I've realized, right. Is, is that look what I created with my negative mindset. I, I basically created a little bubble for myself. I lived in this bubble, a bubble where I, a bubble of, I cannot, as uh, Dr. Sano says in his book, the tyranny of the should, I have to, follow these rules throughout my entire day. I've got to walk like this. I've got to, I've got to, I can only sit for this long. I can only stand for this long. I've got to wear my orthotics. I've got to put on my cream. I've got to massage. I had all these rules, right? And yes. then I, just, I decided to myself, well, if I've created this with a negative mindset, look how, if, if my mission was to basically cut myself off from the world, because what, back then my mindset was, if the world leaves me alone, if the world, if, if everyone leaves me alone, just give me a month and I'll be good. Give me a month. If the world stops a month, I'll, I'll, I'll heal up because I just need more time to, I guess, do my recovery techniques. And then I decided, well, what happens if I s switch the mindset? What can I create if I'm positive, if, if I'm strong? Instead of believing when a physio says, see me in two weeks, what happens if I say I'm not coming to see you in two, two weeks? What happens if someone says you uh, basically 
going against my my um going against my nature which is to follow follow the, the rules and the orders of things you know because they, they told me to follow these steps what happens if i don't follow those steps and i got better doing that because that's what well, you Dr. had what rose will call a character change somewhat somewhat yes I, I became less compliant and part of my personality now now is that um I, i've re- built a built a very very strong narrative within myself about how strong uh, our bodies are i don't believe that we're meant to be in pain every day if i go to bed at night and i wake up i haven't done anything physical there's no real reason why i should wake up and my entire sp- spine is an eight out of ten i don't believe it i just don't believe that's what we're made for i did that for two and a half three years why because i went to bed every night expecting pain I, what um i, I did I listened to Dr. Sano and then I listened to one or two lectures from, I believe his name is Dr. Schubner. He said that 90% of all um, chronic pain emanates from the brain, that it's created in the brain. And it, it just made sense. I expected to be in pain every day. And my body, my mind was so strong that it created this pain and, and gave me exactly what I expected to do because our brains work through predictive coding. You know, this is all neuroscience and there's things to back that up. We see what we expect to see. We feel what we expect to feel. I expected to be in danger all the time. Like when someone said exercise, my first mental narrative was be careful. Don't. You shouldn't. You can't. Now when someone says exercise, I think fun. I think fun. I think Ken. I think Will. I think friends. I think positive. There's nothing to fear. Um, you talk a lot about, about the, um, you know, your fight or flight response. So not only was I in pain throughout the whole day, I have I had insomnia at night. So my worries about my day daily routine happened yeah, at waiting, night. Yeah, waiting, waiting for the next lot of pain. Oh, and you're just sitting yeah. there. And so I went through about a period, roughly of four weeks of two hours sleep, work working nonstop, trying to do all these things, rush to the hospital, uh, have my students call me, try to figure out what's going on with the staff and pay who I've got to pay things like that. And then when you get home, you expect your bed to be in a place of solace. For me, I would just sit at night just just wondering, can I? And then I started having this silly belief, which which was, I can't sleep. I don't know how to sleep. I don't, I can't sleep anymore. I don't know how to do sleep. So that thing sort of became this massive cycle. And then eventually, after about four weeks, I became very, very run down. And it's not a proud moment of my life, but I decided, you know what, I think something's going on here. I might need some help. And I, I spent one night in a psychiatric ward. I went there and I just said to them, you know, I'm not feeling very well. I'm being really run down. I'm not, I'm not myself anymore. Like they didn't really ask me what it was about, but it was really as a, my, I had this such great frustration as a, from not only the pain, the fear of the pain, but the frustration from my inability to heal myself. And I spent that one night and when I got out of that that mental um, mental institution, I just said, I'm, "I'm." They gave me pills. He take these antidepressants, and I looked at the pills. I said, "I'm not doing any of that anymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna get better myself." And just by chance, God bless him, when I went there, I met another nurse there. He was a male nurse. He was a fighter like me, a boxer. And he said a lot of the. Uh, we had a conversation yesterday, Tova. He said exactly what you said. Get out of your head get into your body. He said that to me straight away. I said, get into your heart. I said, get into your heart. Okay. Similar. (laughs) And he he just said a lot of things, you know, I I was crying there, breaking down. I said, it's not good enough. My, my family needs me. I'm I'm not good enough. And he just said, it's all going to pass. I said, I've got plantar fasciitis. Every time I stand, I can't stand for longer than a minute. Plantar fasciitis is not a bad thing. It's, it's, it's sure. It's really painful at times, but it's, it's only a minute thing, but because it's, it's everlasting when you think it's everlasting it just for me that was one of the biggest thing in both feet you just you can't stand sitting becomes a problem as well and just i would say i've got plantar fasciitis you know what he told me his name was chris chris said so what i got it too big deal man i said i got insomnia so what christian i got it too i said but i, I said i can only I, I have because this is now i realize this is my perfectionist personality talking about i must sleep eight hours a day he said to me, Christian, I sleep four just fine. I sleep four, five, six hours now. I'm just fine. I train mental clarity. I'm fine. We're not all the same. We can be we, we can be different. We don't have to follow the exact rules. For me, that was sort of a big thing. And he really just sort of gave me that um, 
th that spark would, of things to, to would you, go forward. Would you mind sharing, this might be a bit personal, but would you mind sharing where this idea of the rules came from? Where that, did that, that, that come from? That is Christian. Christian is, is, a, is a, a rule follower. I, I, I don't know why. I've, I've been very, very compliant. Um, mm, uh, another big, big um, thing in my life was when I was two years old, I nearly died from meningitis. Okay, that, yeah. that doesn't mean anything, but what happened as a result it of does. that? It means what, everything. It, it means a lot. It means everything now, it does. Um, because I was then raised after that. My parents had three children. I was the middle and child. And cotton wool. Oh, I can't tell you how many times I've been told, be careful, Christian, don't do that. I had already had almost that TMS mindset of you're one step away from being fragile. You know, I, that was very ingrained so in me interesting. That, yeah. that, that wasn't a really conscious thing i knew about and i don't think <laughs> they, and it they looks like to the world died. it's a good life you had a good childhood and yes, it I did. was in perspective but then the relationship yes. that you developed from that yeah so for, for me to go from christian who can be um you know, very healthy very strong to being christian who is the fragile person that wasn't a big step in my personality because I'm already have that base of be careful. Uh, one of the reasons That's why, right. I, yeah, one of the reasons why I went to boxing to be, you know, I guess you say in Spanish, machismo, be macho, is I wanted to overcome that. I, I'm tired of people saying, don't do that. Every time I went to boxing training, my, my parents would say, don't do that. You're deaf in one ear because from the meningitis, I almost died. Plus it ate my uh, left eardrum. So I only have one ear. So they would say, you're going to get deaf. Um, you wear glasses, be careful, you're going to be blind. Uh, be, be, you know, a very, uh, a very strong um, sense of self-protection. And what happened is when I went through all my problems, that self-protection and the nervous system just <clears throat> completely amped up to levels yeah, yeah. that took a while to, to get back down. Yeah. Yeah. Look, could I just mention to our viewers that if you look at a tiny, a tiny child, like a two- or three-year-old, they can fall over and hurt themselves, maybe quite badly. But if there's no one around to see them, they'll pick themselves up and they'll continue playing. So they haven't registered pain. But they see mummy in the distance or daddy in the distance and they'll pick themselves up, look at their cut knee and they'll run and cry. And they'll, they'll say they've got pain. But that <laughs> same, same child if there was no one around, would just ignore it. And what Christian is saying is by that being reinforced over and over, he got a care and attention and love through his problems. So, of course, we're going to stay with it and, and compound it, add layers to it, in other words. But, so thank you for sharing that because you being ill at such a young age is so important to see the connection because that set that set the the groundwork didn't it into sure. yeah into uh, you everything. sorry yeah and you uh, know everything you said rose uh, dr sano wrote that he wrote that in his book about the children and the, the register of pain and, and, and things like that he, he wrote that and i've read that yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah well you would have seen it as a teacher as well wouldn't you? Yes, oh, I teach high school, but yeah, no, it, it's exactly yeah, what you're saying. It, yeah, 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 yeah. Fascinating. Uh, and, uh, I, I'm, I'm 41 years old. My mother still communicates with me in that self-protection mode. Are you okay, Christian? Is everything all right? Be careful. I'm told be careful every day, you know, um, and she means it from a loving way, and there's nothing wrong with that. <coughs> you know, they just, they lo almost lost their son, and they, they just embraced me and wanted me to be, to be, with them and uh, that that's all you know that that self-protection is a part of my personality and i have to oh, well i have sort of overcome that now because i don't believe that i'm, I'm fragile uh, some of the things that i've done um through boxing uh, i put myself in a lot of danger i've you know been with professionals i fought i've done crazy things to my body um just to sort of prove this and i can tell you the the pain that i felt from my tms my symptoms way supersedes any of that physical stuff that i went through with the violence that 
that it was way off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have a look at what Linda has just said. Uh, exactly. I had that, uh, Linda. I, I had that. I was, um, I had um, lower back pain. That, that's initially when my pain started. For me, my, I don't like to call it pain because they're just symptoms. They come and go. Uh, TMS, the mind body syndrome, temporary mind body syndrome. It's temporary. It will pass if you give it time. It might pass in an hour, might pass in a, in a, in a day, might pass in five days. I've had times where it seized up, wouldn't go away for a week. But, uh, and I mean, this is during my recovery, my proper uh, Dr. Sano um, getting well. Throughout that whole I wonder, time, I remember once. Yeah. I wonder um, if Linda's read Dr. Sano's book. I, I met Linda. I, Have you, Linda? I, yeah, I met yeah, Linda. I met Linda. She was on the Mind Body Syndrome page and she asked about the, the stream today, the broadcast today, and I showed her where to go. And, um, you know, she may be new to it. I don't know where she's at with her mind body. And, um, you know, part of it is a mindset, like you said. I mean, it's like the brain hears, Linda, the brain, your brain hears that you're struggling. And it is a struggle. It is frustrating. It's a struggle. How, so one of the tools that Rose and I help people apply and implement is you can feel frustrated. Christian is frustrated. He's telling us his frustration, but somehow he figured out how his body didn't, he responded to his frustration more than reacted, which is a chemical thing. When you respond to something, oh, there's the pain. Hmm. Okay. I, I'm, 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 I don't want it to be here. I'm not going to lie to myself, but wonder if I could be a little compassionate to myself. I wonder if I could do a little breathing and do some self-soothing. I'm all for hot packs and cold packs. They help. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There's a relationship, Linda, that I think the three of us are saying that one has to discover about themselves. You want to elaborate on that, Rose and Christian, on the relationship with our pain? Go ahead, Rose. <clears throat> well, I don't sort of quite see it like that in a way. That's why Rose and I are partners. <laughs> Go ahead. How do you see it? How would you fr frame that? How would I explain it? Yeah. Well, she's got some feelings about something that she's repressed. Right. Yeah. So part of her recovery is to recognize that she probably never feels angry or she's patient or, as Christian says, he's, um, she's very um, agreeable or Complacent. very, yeah, all of those things. And uh, like that's that Sano book, you know, these are the things that are going to get, make me feel more comfortable in the world, but they're not good for my heart and they're not good for my feelings and my emotions. Mm -hmm. So which do I want? Do I want my feelings to come up or do I want my pain to re repress my feelings? You've got a choice. There's a fork in the road now for you, Linda, especially as you listen to to Christian, there's a fork. You either say on that, I go towards my area or what, the left, for example, that says I can conquer this and it's my mindset, or I can go the other road and say I'm in chronic pain and this is my life. You've got a choice and the choice is yours, mm -hmm. but it requires will. And this is why when Christian commented, when he contacted us first, I realized that he had his will. He created this will in himself to get better. And that's why it was important for us to ask him to share his story because he had a choice. He could go with his mother who wanted to support him and protect him as a 35 or 40 year old, or he could be his own man and go out there and just go on a limb and prove to himself that he could recover and understand that that sense of holding himself safe keeps you unsafe. That's it's right. like the story, I mean, I love the story of the two parents and the two children are climbing the tree. And one parent says to the child, be careful that limb is thin, you're going to fall off. 
and the yeah. other parent at the other tree says to the kid hold on tight you're doing a great job same yeah. limb same wind same age kids but the mindset of the parents is about danger whereas you know you can have pain i mean i'm a nurse i've looked after people in terrible pain but surgical pain for example but they'll get up and they'll just override the pain and move whether or not it hurts them or not they'll just move so linda just find this now find that fork in the road and make your decision you've written something else you know when she said when linda says i don't believe uh that nothing's working it's like it's kind of like a language that she's having with her body i can't believe i'm in pain it's kind of like this is i'm back to the relationship there's a relationship you have to have with your pain the christian came to terms with his pain and had a different interaction this is some of the somatic tracking work that alan gordon's doing there's a different relationship linda what you're doing is like disconnecting like this is happening this is happening i can't believe it so what is the brain doing inflammation muscle spasm protection of course linda i can't imagine your frustration but think about a different relationship or reaction or response to what the doctors are saying not we can just say you're off my list or like okay how can I come to terms? So there's a fork in the road, like Rose said. What if there was no negotiation with the fight and flight mechanism? Meaning, I don't want to say it like that. I want to say there's a kind of acceptance. Christian, Christian talk more about the acceptance of your pain that allowed you to get rid of, to get out of pain by accepting it. Maybe that might it's, help Linda. It's too much to talk about. First, I would say, Linda, like, look at that language that you've used. Struggling, pain, um, hurts, don't believe. Why don't, why don't, you know, do you believe that you'll never heal? Do you believe that you're broken? Do you probably answer yes to both those questions, don't you? Dr. Sa the message of Dr. Sano is we're not broken. The body has an amazing capacity to heal. Everything that you've mentioned there in the chat, I am you. I've had all of that. I've had all bulging discs. I, I know exactly what you mean. When I had to go on the toilet, I would have to hold, I would have to actually hold the sides of the wall because the pain would be so severe. It was like a, a hot, um, it's oh. like, it, it, for me, it was like, it was like having a, a hot, pee, a, a hot um, 50 cent coin right on your back 24 hours a day like that. I know exactly what you're talking about. And, um, it sounds counterintuitive, but you say, why don't that, why don't these me medicines work? Because you don't have a, a, a physical issue. Your, 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 the brain is creating, I'm, I'm assuming that you've had it checked out. You don't have, you've done blood tests, you've checked out that it's not cancer or anything like that. Though, all those things have come back negative, which is what Dr. Sano says, but your brain is creating the problem. It, your pain is very, very real. Just like my pain was very, very real. I went to now, Christian hold for a moment. Sure. His pain was very real, but he had all these other issues going on in his life. You need to marry those other issues with your back pain, with whatever it is, because there's going to be some sort of issue going on. Christian yeah. had a son who, who was a yeah. little bit on the spectrum or whatever and was obviously there was no issue the schools were just okay. overreacting but Sarno yeah. says the pain right. is here because it's distracting you from something deeper going on that's yeah that's what Rose is saying I think. Right. exactly yeah, yeah. And so uh, linda I, I, this I, may not I, be I, an opportunity I, linda for you to talk to talk about but you know it, it it doesn't have to be like michael galinsky will say a big t or a little t it could be a small trauma but we're sensitive strong individuals and we perceive something and our our brain begins to, you know, and so we're talking about neuroplasticity here also. You know, Christian took some time, a lot of time, and really began to change his habits. Um, you know, and I kept talking to Christian before the show about getting in touch with his feelings. He's like, forget the feelings, but like the feelings are important, like Rose will say, but you were compassionate, Christian. You were more heartfelt. You did walk the road from your head to your heart and you did change your brain 
Uh, this is part of the work that Rose does, the ISTDP work, which is really profound and helps people get out of pain and works people with, you know, so this is all part of it. Whether we call it emotions or not, you became friendly. You became a friend to yourself, Christian. You began to accept yourself. You weren't fighting yourself. You didn't blame your parents. You said, oh, my parents are like this. I'm not going to be that kind of parent. Somehow you took a kind of responsibility in this loving, compassionate way. I think that's why the word will fits very well because you've got it. It's a will that I, drives. I, I, I can do these things physically because I will it and I will yeah. do it because I can do it. There's capability and then there's there's potential of the mind to do it. So, you know, it, it, it's a cycle. You know, I, I think with Linda, for me, I have a sort of little sayings that I say to myself, and one of them is, um, that you're in your body your fire alarm is on the fire alarm is on there's no fire there's no fire in the body those scans those things they came up they just they tried to find anything to tell you where the fire is coming from but the, there's no fire the fire alarm is on nothing's wrong how many times are you going to send the firefighter in and he's going to tell you we're not coming again because there's no fire and for me i would sit there and i feel that when i started reading dr sano the symptoms would come on and i'd be in my bedroom and I would feel it. I would feel, uh, I would, I would feel the symptoms. And I would just say to myself, "Bring it on, bring it on, brain. I'm doing absolutely nothing. You want me to go do my uh, my Pilates routine? You want me to foam roll? I'm doing nothing. Going to hang out with my family. You can go to level ten. You can go to level nine. Bring it on. I'm not scared of a man to fight. Why would I be scared of you right now? You know, bring it on. And then I wake up the next day. Boom! It's zero. It's gone. So I'm like, wow. I've reinforced. To for the last you know five years that things are dangerous maybe i can reinforce that things are not dangerous maybe i can reinforce safety maybe yeah. this is another thing as well uh, we talk about an expectation of pain i see here linda's talking about you know some serious some things that w went on with um yeah, within her family when my father went through those issues i was very afraid that he's gonna you know die in a very uh, he's still alive by the way he's got dementia now and he's basically pretty much uh a vegetable for a lack of a better term uh but he's still alive i was very afraid that he was being in pain so i actually prayed to god when he went into the hospital i said to um in my prayer i said to god give me the pain give me my give me pain so he doesn't have to go in, into pain so there was a subconscious belief throughout this whole thing that in fact i'm kind of doing something right for this like because I have that may no be what's happening with linda with her daughter passing like that it might have been this whether Linda, you're blaming yourself. There's a lot of things that could go on. That, but Rose would say, you know, what's it's anxiety? It's anxiety. What's the anxiety driving your pain? You know, what's the deep emotion? And that yeah. will help you. It will set you free. That emotion of, I mean, how could so, a mother not feel shame and grief her whole life? And that has yeah, to there be. Yeah, there you are, Linda. Your fear of death is overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, your twenty-three-year-old daughter is uh, is um, a young adult now, and as you're getting older, all those old memories are coming back. Yeah. And it's very courageous of you to share here. And we, Rose and I, you know, we create a safe place here, and really appreciate your sharing. But you're in you're in a, a good world of learning and becoming your own. You know your own I, I like to say your own doctor your own therapist and able to help yourself that's what this work is about the doctor said we can't help you but you're in a great place and um i want well, you to see, know that it's great could, I, with you. could i add also linda uh that um your life is good now and somehow maybe there's something going on for you that that creates anxiety that your life is good now and something's going to go wrong so the anxiety is going to come up and oh then the goodness. tension and then that feeling of being on the starting blocks you know if you look at an athlete who's going to do a 400 meter run he's going to have to have his whole body ready to go and the and the heel is raised and the, the foot is down and he's ready to go and if you're in that situation 24 7 it's going to cause problems. Yeah. Yeah. And if you link now that whole idea 
that, yes, I have got a good life now. I've got a healthy 23-year-old daughter and I have a loving partner. And then this fear of death comes. Right. Death and mainly probably not your own death, but you're fearing death of other people. And if you were in therapy, I'd be asking you about the relationship with your own parents and their own death, just like Christian was talking about his dad getting cancer. And that brought up more pain for him. Right. Uh, um, you speak about death. That, that was a big thing for me. When I saw my father in this mental institution, I started having not suicidal thoughts, but I started thinking, is this what is, is this the end for all of us? So basically we live, you know, joyous, happy lives, and then it's just taken away one moment, and then we just... And I would say I would say a lot of negative things to my wife. If this happens to me, make sure you just kill me. Don't send me to an institution like this. Uh, life's not um, bad. Things await us at the end. And I started predicting that bad things w would happen to me. You know, and then uh, very it, it all comes as, as part of that negative mindset. I'm not saying be overly positive, but if we have a negative mindset, the emotions create. Um, Within How about that, that, just being yeah. honest? Let's just be honest with ourselves. I call it naked with your clothes on. It's a kind of an honesty, like John Fredrickson's book, The Lies We Tell Ourselves. For a lot of times, you told yourself lies, and then you started to feel the truth. Believe the truth them. is not always, it's a, it's a sweet hurt, I call it. It's kind of like, we'll set you free. And maybe, Linda, this pain, it's not this pain, this pain is teaching you. There's a wisdom in pain there's a wisdom not that everybody's ready to find a gift in pain but that ultimately the people that rose and i've met when they saw that there was a learning experience here and something to learn that helped them move through their pain because there was more of a, i want to learn from this i want to benefit i want the wisdom from this pain and that's what your daughter who passed is teaching you you know you're here living for her 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 death so it's it's deep Lindy, you're a sensitive, strong person, and you're in a deep place in order, and you could fly at any time with this work. And Christian is just one of, I even stopped counting our shows because we've had many yeah. shows with people. Um, yeah, and so, you know, and so Rose and I'll talk about, well, belief is, is a skill. Belief is a chemical skill, and we have to learn to believe. How do I believe? Right, we have to so learn. Look, yeah, look at Linda's comment, see? Uh, I would just like to say something uh, just, just regarding, uh, you know, Linda, my, my compassion goes out to you, what, what you're going through. I know exactly uh, what's happening there. But um, j just looking here uh, about the things that you've said. Put it on the screen, Tova. Put it up on the screen. There's a couple of uh, points. Can you read it? Yeah, the last one. My parents both died young. Yeah. Um, I'd like to just comment regarding um, just emotions. Uh, I'm not too emotion, I'm, I'm an, an emotional person, but now part of what I do is when something negative happens to me or something I don't like, I will actually consciously say to myself, I don't like that. That's not a good thing. Yes. I, I'm not happy. But, I'll, yes. but Rose, what I will say is I cannot like that. My preference for not liking something or not enjoying an experience has no relation upon how my body should feel. If I'm in a bad situation, I'm not happy. Why should I get a headache? Why should I be sore here? That that, that that link doesn't have to be. Sure, it sucks. Sure, it's shit. But, but accept but, it and, just, and say that, that if, if, I'm, if I'm angry or if something is not uh, according to how I expect it to be, it sucks. That doesn't have to equal physical pain. That Don't make that link. And I say to myself out loud, I actually say to myself out loud, Christian, this is not very good, but so what? You don't have to be in physical pain as a result of this. And if it does happen... I don't care, Brian, because it's just going to be temporary. You're going to pass like everything else has passed. Yeah. And I don't, like, I don't yeah. it's our reaction to the symptom that matters the most because. Yeah. Reframe that to, also. Yeah. And we, allow we that angry, angry feeling to come up. You don't have to do anything with an angry feeling. No. All you it, have to do is recognize, yes, I don't like what's happening and I feel hurt or I feel disappointed or I feel angry. I feel it in me. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to tell anyone else. You don't have to have an argument about yeah. it. You don't have to discharge it. Exactly. All you have to do is recognize it. Exactly. Recognize but, but it in you. 
I also won't, ex won't accept personally that my body will then turn on a symptom. I, when, it, when it happens to me, I tell my brain, I'm onto you, I know what you're doing right now. I won't accept it. I don't care if, if I'm feeling anxious in this situation. So what I'm I hearing is you're not a victim. And Linda, I know you feel like a victim because your parents died young, but you're not a victim. That is a terrible thing, and that's an experience. But you can respond to that experience as if this is what happened to me. It doesn't mean I have to, I'm a victim. It happens. Yeah, it's life. Yourself. Stuff you happens. Can teach yourself that the emotions are not dangerous to the body. They're not. They're not a dangerous thing because what you're doing over time, Linda, is you're you're teaching yourself that not only these are these emotions dangerous, but then they correspond to my physical back pain. You know, and my actually, thoughts are dangerous. And my thoughts. Yes. Are dangerous. And this, it but doesn't matter where it would be. Sorry, it doesn't matter whether it be emotion. For me, it was a little bit of emotion, but there was also a lot of learned uh, helplessness. And I equated exercise or anything physical with the expectation of pain. So for Linda, it may be the expectation of negative so, emotions. So how does Linda pain. start? Let's give Linda an easy way to start. An easy take home, I call take home tool, take home insights. But this has to be applied when we're in pain this doesn't work on the on, on the yoga mat this works in our painful experience we get an opportunity to practice the methodology of john sarno so linda is in pain what is something how can she start to implement some of this stuff that you're talking about what would be an easy easy it's, it's like rose will say it's not going to be easy i like to say when you're not feeling comfortable this is this is the comfort zone. This is the new comfort zone. When you're uncomfortable in this work, that's the new comfort zone, and that's when you know it's working. Yes. No, so, you know, no. go ahead. Napoleon Bonaparte said, nothing is lost as long as courage remains. It doesn't matter whether that courage be on a level 10 or half a percent. You've got to start with a spark. If that spark is even... Um, you fake it till you make it. You do whatever you can. Exactly. Uh, I, I run, I exercise nonstop. I'm pretty much doing like 20,000 steps a day. And then at night I'll exercise. I'll go to the gym. I'll box for an hour and a half. I'll be on my roof and I'll bend over. I'll do things that you never thought um, uh, were, were possible. But I, I, I do those things. Um, I, I do those things now. I didn't start boxing an hour and a half. I was told so basically, I didn't tell like sort of the, the full version of my story, but I went through all these people. Um, I guess you could say that I was traumatized to a degree from the medical system. But then I met one physio. physio. I, I went in, I saw him, he made me do all these stretches and things. And he, he's not even a, a believer of Dr. Sano, but basically he is, he doesn't know it. He straight right away, he said to me, there's nothing wrong with you. And I said, what do you mean there's nothing wrong with me? What are all these symptoms? He goes, I've checked you out, you're absolutely fine. I said, when can I exercise? He goes, you can exercise right now, but you believe you can't. What about my shoes? He goes, well, I can show you 10,000 articles right now that tell you that half of the world doesn't have, doesn't have um, plantar fasciitis, Christian. They do not wear orthotics. So this, this, as much evidence as, you, as I had gained to validate my pain, there's just as much evidence to validate people who are not in that situation. So there's, that, that is just as true, true for that. And he, yeah. when I left that, that um, one, one, um, one consultation, he said to me, he didn't tell me to go for a run and do a marathon, anything like that. He said, lie on the floor, breathe in and out. That's where I started. I did, I did it for um, four, four, 30 seconds um, every second day. And that's where I started from. I didn't start, as you see right now, strong, I can box, I can move, I can do whatever. I didn't start there. I started from basically nothing, from a little spark, from saying, you know what? When I saw my wife bring in the washing, oh, don't worry, Christian, I'll do it. And that sort of hurt my ego. I, I said no so many times to everything. I said, I'm a man. I need to take care of my family. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here anymore and do nothing. I'm going to, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to get better. You also, we're so not scared of the pain. It's hard, Lindsay. No. Pain is scary. So how would somebody? See that pain is a message. Pain is not there to attack you. But <coughs> if you respond to the symptoms, that in itself will calm the brain down. Maybe not right away. 
And um, I think it's hard when, like, I, I sent, uh, I asked on the prep call with Christian, I said, well, what do you do when somebody's just in excruciating pain? What do you say to them? I mean, this is the kind of thing he, he would say, but we're, we're, it's also here. It's in the head. And as Rose told me, I think Linda has to, you have to come a little closer to understanding your heart and your emotions and how scared you feel. And maybe there has to be this safety feeling of safety where dr hanscom's work is about threat safety so linda you're under threat how would you give your body safety how would your parents if they were alive take care of you how would you take care of your daughter and your other child now a sense of safety would you agree with that rose also with what chris is talking about <laughs> i speak my language rose speaks hers we somehow come to an agreement <laughs> But this is what David Hanscom said, Dr. Tovar, I'm going to tell you and Rose, uh, don't call it mind body, call it threat safety. I thought that's phenomenal because it is a way of understanding the red the alarm. But the safety is about loving, compassion, acceptance, recognizing, like Rose will say, be curious. Oh, I wonder what that pain is. I well, do that all the time. What I do that all the time. Yeah, and I'll say things to myself. Oh, isn't that isn't that a coincidence? Someone I just had a negative experience in work. Oh wow, I can feel something in my in my shoulder or if, whatever it is. I can feel something in my leg right now. Well, when I was happy ten minutes ago, I didn't feel that. What a coincidence that this is happening. I know what you're doing, brain. I'm fine. You walk on. You know, I get that every day. If I wanted to, I could go now to a physio and or chiro and just every day I have this and they'll diagnose me with something. They'll tell me I have neuralgia, whatever. I'm fine. I know that's not, that's actually not an issue. It's temporary and temporary can be short. It can only be, uh, you know, I, I've had time. So I'll give it, I'll give one example, right? Um, I had a quite a stressful last holidays where I had to be um, at a family event and I, I, I felt, um, I, I felt like a prisoner. So I was simply driving. I, I drove uh, a long, a, a long car ride back home. It was about a five hour journey. Throughout that whole journey, I was feeling um, feeling quite negative about myself. My back then seized up. It took me about a week and a half to get better. Every single day, my back was like that. I couldn't move. But every single day, I would just do it a little bit. Okay, it stops there. I'm going to do it again. I, and I would just constantly, I would even when the pain came on really severe, I would say out loud, no, brain, we're going to be better. You know, I take a little victory. Maybe I can get to here now. Then I can get to there and I'll just slowly work through it. After five days, I could have gone to a, you know, to a physio or I could have done anything. It went totally away. I went from a 10 to a zero doing nothing but my regular day and just believing that I'm not broken and that my body okay. has a capacity to heal. And that I started realizing that pain came as a result of my negative mindset and actually feeling that I was under threat because I felt like again like a child like i had no choice in this matter whatever it was when when you say a negative mindset could you accept draw that out a bit more because there obviously was some self-critical component in that me negative mindset it wasn't so much that i had to go there it's why did i comply or why did i do something something was stronger and deeper i mean i know you've explained no, that there was guilt because now that I recognize that I'm a people pleaser, when it does occur and yeah. I'm and I'm conscious of it after the fact that I have pleased someone for no real reason other than to please them, but they have not reciprocated because that's the issue with, with us as um, people pleasers, that we believe that the world exists on some type of, some type of contract where as I consciously or unconsciously learned as a child, if I please your needs, then you will meet my needs. But what happens is in the real world, people don't know that we're, we are, we have this covert contract. I, I might I might adhere to your needs. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, look, at, I listen to this person's problems and then they just walk away. They don't tell me about, they don't care about me at all. You know, and then when that happens and I feel dirty, I feel ashamed that I've done something like that. And then when something like that happens, that guilt happens and then I start feeling physical symptoms not too long after that now. And I'm, yeah, a, I'm exactly. very well aware of that. Yeah. Um, it's quite interesting. And, and I, I think Linda oh, still wants to me. focus on her Linda. symptoms, which yeah, is kind of like. Also, I think she's special. She's a special case. 
You're not special. And I don't mean that negatively. You're not special. You know, I thought I was special. No one's going to heal me. I need to go. With, I used to have this belief, right, that if my back hurt, back hurt, I can only go see this one Cairo in Sydney. He's the only guy that can possibly heal me. His special techniques. No, here's the thing. Even if there's something physical wrong, again, we have a choice of how to respond to it. If, if you had a bullet wound, God forbid, we'd be talking the same way. Linda's had enormous trauma in her life. Her body's reacting. Things get better, things get worse. It's not a science. So it's we're all sensitive people that will have, it's really for Linda, for you to know, I'm explaining my situation, what I would say in answer to what you said. I would like you to see this as a door into yourself, how you heal, how you recover, how you respond to pain, how you respond to anger, how you respond to love. This is a relationship. I think it's important to see this relationship with the doctors, with the healing, with your expectations. Um, that's how I would explain it. I think this is all a message for you, Linda. It's something you can learn, and you're not a victim. I'm hearing a little bit that you might feel like a victim, and we all have been there. You're not a victim. We all have big cheese and little, little traumas. But I think it's important to see that you're not a victim, and you have choices. That's what Christian is saying you can and will get better with the will and hope. Hope is a belief. Biology is, 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 is hope and, be and belief is a biology and can be chemical. And I think you're feeling like you hit rock bottom. So, you know, I would, we have to get off the show soon, but I'm really happy you shared, Linda. Maybe, Rose, you want to respond to Linda's last statement? No, I just, uh, she wants us to explain why the pain works for eight hours and it goes to a two. I presume it's because, as Christian just said, he used to believe that a particular doctor would make a difference. So someone no. creates some attachment for you and you go with that. It, it's all based on your early life, your early trauma. And Christian gave us a really fabulous example of a big T but most of us have had small T's. So we don't know what your trauma was, but the reassurance that that person, that acupuncture person or whatever gave you was more important. Or put it another way, it's a placebo. A placebo isn't bad. A placebo is something that reassured you that you were a safe person. A placebo is like your mother looking in your eyes and saying, you're okay, you're safe. That's what a placebo well, is. And what we're talking about is getting to the cause of the problem. And all these things are helping the symptoms, but we're talking about uncovering the true cause of chronic pain. And that's a deeper There's issue. There's a lot of fear. When I read your comments, Linda, you're in what I, I called the freak out zone. I, I freaked out like you did for about two years. No one can help me. I, I, uh, every conversation was very jumbled. I had a brain fog. I'm constantly ju juggling my symptoms and uh, I'm never present. My symptoms became me. I personalized everything. And I would just say, uh, w when I read your comments, there's a big narrative there going on. Um, even though you're not saying it, the sub communication of your, uh, your text is that um, you are broken. You feel like you will never get better. And your brain is responding to these these self-beliefs and those self-beliefs they're very limiting and they can create this cycle and you can get out of that cycle because and there's also uh if we read dr sano the first thing he says it's not a body issue the body uh, symptoms are very are very much there it's coming from the mind everything you've said here is my body this my body that the pain is from my body the um the medication doesn't work for my body it's not going to work because it's created in the brain. But the brain is switching it on and off depending upon upon danger. And it's not a conscious decision. Because if I could, I would have turned off my pain the second it happened. It's an unconscious thing that our brain is saying, Linda, we're under danger. Let's protect it. We're protect it actually thinks it's protecting you by, by you thinking about that rather than what's going on in your life. And that's, if you read Dr. Sano, he's very clear in, in that message. Yeah, yeah. Linda, thank you so much for, in, for being with us tonight or today because it's really good because Christian was able to actually explain to someone else the whole process that went on for him and how it's going for you. 
So even if you just look back at this tape when it goes on, well, it'll be on Facebook and it will also be on YouTube, mm -hmm. but have a look at Christian's dialogue to you and see how that's going to actually give you that will. It may just be the spark. What did Napoleon say? He said that, oh, there's two things I say. The first, Napoleon said, nothing is lost, his courage remains. And Mike Tyson had a trainer um, called Customato, and he said that this is regarding a fighter. And when he said, a boy comes to me with a spark. I feed the spark till it, till it becomes a flame. And I, feel the, I feed the flame until it becomes a roaring blaze. I say that regarding my willpower now. I started with the spark. Instead of feeding it with negative things such as, um, a big one is telling everyone you meet, I'm in pain. This is what's going on. Um, you, you're telling it, you're, you're reconfirming to your brain with every conversation that you are the, the personalized uh, hurt person. Um, stop researching, stop going on the internet, confirming things about that you have a rare case that um, you're feeding into your, uh, feeding more and more of fear. So you've created a roaring blaze of, um, surrounding your pain, but you can create a roaring blaze regarding your hope and your will. So for me, me when I exercised for that first, um, that those first few uh, months, I had to unlock each thing. You've got to unlock. You've got to unlock the lock with your next move. You're not going to go. You're not going to go from zero, uh, from ten to zero in one day. You might just go to one, then back to zero. You might go to one and a half, back to zero. It's going to go. Think. It's going to not going to be linear. Uh, linear your progress so you, you've just got to give it time but it all starts with that spark and sometimes that spark is an absolute fake i did it all the time i'd go out for a walk i'd say to my say consciously out to my brain we're fine nothing's wrong with me i don't care that's that that symptom i'm still gonna walk i would say things like i can't wait to exercise with my friends say a positive affirmation about that i can't wait to exercise Exercise is not dangerous. And then you have to believe it. You have to be really honest. Are you, you no, know, like you to have myself. to believe that you can do this like on a deep level. And that's a skill we have to learn. Like in this very teddy bear way, you're being taken care of little Christian. You're taking care you, you of your little I, boy. You know, you know what I do every day? Uh, not every day, but sometimes I'll say to myself just randomly now, I love you, man. I'm proud of you. I don't know why I do it, but. I do it now. I said, I'm proud of you, man. You, you, you're actually really a good person. You know, you, you've done everything. I don't need anyone's permission to feel good anymore. I feel good about myself. Just like when I went to these doctors and the medical things, I wanted them to heal me. I needed their, their external validation and external permission to be well. No, I will. The power is my own. I take it. It's mine. And it's, um, we, we, it's just, it, it's mine. I'll, I'll, I'll do with it what I wish. I can because I will and I can, you know, I, I will and I can. I say that all the time. When I exercise, I can, I will. I would think about all of you guys, even Linda, I've never met you. I would say to myself when I'm exercising, I'm doing this for the TMS community. I'll prove to them. I'll show them. Everyone who I met, um, I, I don't really mean this literally, but as part of my competitive personalities, I would phrase it negatively. They think I can't exercise. They think I can't bend. They think I'm not strong. Wait till you see I'll what I can them. do this yeah and we do that every day you don't think i can do it brain well, we're going to do twenty thousand steps today amazing we're going to have you back we're going to have you back for part two don't worry <laughs> Rose, did you want to say something because we have to go <clears throat> i would like you christian i'd like to give you a take-home message when you're doing your self-talk say i am lovable i can do that i am lovable yeah and the same with linda mm -hmm. The take home message is I am lovable. Pain, no pain, anger, repressed anger. Remember when we repress our anger, we also repress our grief and our love and our sadness. Yes. Because we use so much energy to repress the angry feelings that we actually lose out on the other feelings. And I'm sure, Christian, you could actually say that, couldn't you? That yes. once the guilt came up, and you're able to release the guilt, more feelings towards your son, towards your wife, towards your dad. All of these feelings came up 100%. They flow. Yes. Uh, it's like life is, life. I had an expectation that life would just be smooth and easy. And when it got hard, well, this is not according to my life narrative. What's going on here? Because I was so coddled, I assumed everything would just be perfect. 
No, life is going to be difficult, and that's okay. It's our response to it is what matters. Thank you, Chris. So also, we meet a lot of people that have healed Sarno and became coaches, and you just started to go back to school and be your teacher. So it's really, you're really very, very inspiring, and you are a coach, and you're probably a wonderful dad. I'm sure you are a husband and son, and really happy you contacted Rose and I. And we, we generally get lots of people that contact us. We don't even meet and say we help. So, you know, we're happy to be conduits for people and to be here. Rose and I do have a website. We do work with clients together and separately. Rose is an amazing ISCDP therapist, and i am got lots of blessed experience helping people in chronic pain. And Christian, you have blessed our studio. Thank, Thank you. you. And we Appreciate will meet you. again for part two. <laughs> Rose and Kristen, have a wonderful night. Thank you to the audience. This will be on YouTube tomorrow with the description. We have over 100 shows on YouTube of amazing Christian stories. And this is, this is your story. It was my story. It was Rose's story, Kristen's story. Um, as Michael Kalinske says, we all have that um, condition called being human. So in honor of being human, God bless. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Bye. <laughs>